Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming out. And I guess what's a downright balmy evening for uh, Michigan. Um, this is a sustainable Ann Arbor forum. My name is Stephen Wade. I'm from the Washtenaw County Office of Community and Economic Development. Um, I, I'm from outside. I'm from Virginia, outside of the DC area. And uh, one of the first winters after President Obama was elected, we got a light dusting of snow, as we're wont to do in Virginia. And, School shut down, you know, the federal government shut down, everyone was freaking out. And, and President Obama, in one of his, his press conferences, said that we weren't quite as flinty as the people of Chicago are. And so those of us in Virginia kind of were kind of, what? We're flinty. We like snow. We, you know, we go skiing, those kind of things. But now that I've seen a polar vortex, I have a new, a new respect and appreciation for the flintiness of Michiganders and Chicago people. So um, you guys are really in for a treat tonight. Um, let me make sure. There we go. Um, we, we really have a superstar panel. Um, if if you're, you know, you're here, because I assume you're interested in sustainability, equity, um, food, environmentalism. These, the, these people on this panel, these women tonight, are really leading the way in this community on these issues. And so I think we're really lucky to have them. And so I think we're going to have a really great conversation. I'm going to do a brief introduction um, for kind of why we're here, how we got here. And then each of the speakers will speak for about 10 minutes. And then we'll have a Q&A at the end. So um, save your questions, write them down. I hope to have a, a robust conversation. After I speak, it will be Jamie Kidwell with the city. There's Jamie in the back. Um, Jennifer Hall, the d executive director of the Ann Arbor Housing Commission. Here's Jennifer here in the front. Sarah Teer with Habitat for Humanity of Huron Valley. Um, Charo, Charo Ladon from Casa Latina, a local nonprofit. And Amanda Ed Edmonds from uh, Growing Hope, another local nonprofit. So, um, um, and so as, as was mentioned, this is part of Ann Arbor's sustainability framework. And part of that framework in the city is having a series of forums. These four forums are happening this winter. February 12th, March 12th, and April 12th. Come back to the library and enjoy them. Healthy ec ecosystems, climate and adaptation, and local food. So this is part of a kind of forum series. Again, my name's Stephen. So the reason we're here is that um, we are talking, the, the, the kind of brought us all in a room together is what's called the HUD Sustainable Communities Planning Grant. Um, Kind of shockingly, the federal government did some, some, some good creative thinking, and the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Department of Transportation, the DOT, and the Environmental Protection Agency all decided to put some of their resources together because they realized that their communities were trying to address issues that crossed across their silos, across their departments. And so they put out um, a grant, and Washtenaw County applied and received it in 2012. It's a three-year, $3 million grant. Um, about 100 communities around the country have received this grant, and about seven communities in Michigan have received this grant. So we're about two, two years into a three-year grant. Um, the, the, the goal of the grant in general is to expand existing affordable and energy efficient housing options, um, connect them to job centers and healthy food, and particularly focused on the Washtenaw Avenue corridor between the city of Ann Arbor and the city of Ypsil Ypsilanti. The, the grant in general, tonight we're just going to talk about one small portion of this grant, particularly related to equity, but the grant in general covers a whole number of things, which there's a flyer in the back and online you can find more information. Um, is working on a number of things uh, related to, um, one you've probably heard about the most is Reimagine Washtenaw Avenue. That's an effort along Washtenaw Avenue corridor to do kind of a rethinking of the road and the buildings that connect Ann Arbor to Ipsy to make it a place where people can, can access maybe by walking or by bike or by transit. But trying to th think about Washtenaw Avenue as more of a place we are working on creating more housing opportunities in the western part of the county, closer to opportunity, closer to job opportunities, economic opportunities, transportation. Um, we're doing community development work in Ipsy. Um, there are region-wide efforts, like there's a Latino health survey that um, Charles is going to talk about, food business and urban agriculture. So this grant is, is broad and covers a whole number of aspects of sustainability. Tonight, in particular, we're going to talk about community engagement and equity. Sustainability is tra traditionally defined as the nexus of economics, the environment, and equity. And so equity is defined as just and fair inclusion, um, inclusion in process, inclusion in decision making. Um, and so the HUD and Washtenaw County were interested in creating really focusing in on creating a more equitable process 
including people who are traditionally not involved in the planning process, in the decision-making process, and in so doing, hopefully leading to more equitable outcomes, because so many of the challenges that we confront today have very inequitable outcomes. Um, some of the challenges that we are addressing cover the, the whole gamut from um, as we all are familiar with, affordability challenges. Housing is quite expensive, especially when it's located near opportunity, near jobs, near transportation. And so there's an incredible demand for housing, especially at the lower end for people who don't have much money. There's also a number of economic challenges. Uh, beyond housing costs, there are transportation costs. The second biggest budget in a house, second biggest item in a, in a, in a family's budget is transportation costs. So if they have to add, own, own another car, if they have to drive more, that's more money they spend on transportation, less money they can spend on education, on an asset like a home, on healthy local food, things like that. Um, and a number of these challenges also have environmental implications. If more people are driving, there's, there's pollution, um, there could be more um, likely to have asthma from the air. Um, there's a number of old industrial sites in, in, in our community that have pollution on them. Um, and then there's also physical health challenges, anything from obesity, um, from not walking, to uh, asthma, to depression from these various social issues. And so all, all these issues are things that disproportionately affect people who are excluded, whether it's low-income people, whether it's minorities, whether it's seniors, disabled, people who don't speak English. But, but they affect all of us. They're part of kind of shared networks. There's the, there's, uh, the transportation network is something that we all use. But if people can't live near jobs and have to drive really far, then we're all affected by that transportation challenge. And we all breathe the same air and drink the same water. So even though people who are poor or don't have access to opportunity might feel the effects more, they're part of systems that we all experience. Um, and so in trying to address um, and so this grant kind of tries to get at that, trying to this cross silo, but really engaging with people to try to get some leadership development, capacity building, so that people can be involved and empowered to be involved in their own decision making. Um, so the grant's been really focused on those communities and doing that work, and that's what you're going to hear, hear from the panel tonight. One example is um, with the Reimagine Washtenaw project, for example. We have traditional kind of planning meetings where people come and draw on maps and such. But we knew that that would be hard for a lot of people who didn't have access to transportation or didn't have time. And so we went and had some of those meetings in locations where those people were. We went to some of the, the, the public housing sites that were closest to Washtenaw Avenue. We partnered with Casa Latina to try to work with people who don't speak English to provide more viable opportunities for people to be engaged in their own decision making around their community. Um, and the grant's also been extremely focused on three neighborhoods in eastern Washtenaw County that were probably hardest hit by, by the recession, West Willow in Ypsilanti Township, near the old GM Racer plant, Galt Village um, over in Ypsilanti Township, and then in the city of Ipsy, the south of Michigan Avenue neighborhoods called Soma. We've been invested there doing a lot of community engagement, a lot of the work that you're going to hear about tonight. Um, and in this grant so far, we've already engaged over 2,000 people, and we're really looking to grow that number, and particularly for people who don't normally get engaged. So that's kind of a quick, super quick and super dirty setup. Hopefully it was pretty clear. Um, Jamie, I think, is going to speak next.